Rob from BVAC.com. Uh, we're going to show you how to use the Bushkill BVAC today, demonstrate it on a cutout we're going to do. Uh, it's a very special cutout. Uh, I'm calling it Burt's Bees because we are literally yards away from where Burt Shavitz, uh, a.k.a. Burt's Bees, got started in beekeeping. Um, in the 70s, early 70s, Burt moved from New York City to Allegorville, New York, which is where we are, um, to get out of the hustle and bustle of the city and actually lived in a converted chicken coop and decided he wanted to get into beekeeping. So he got involved with the local beekeeping club, got a few hives uh, going, and that's how he got started in beekeeping. So when you get your bee back, uh, this is what you get. You get the, the bottom board, the cutout shim, and then the top. And we're going to show you the proper way to set it up to do a cutout. And obviously your suction hose goes in here, and we'll put our vacuum on here. So we start by taking the bottom board, uh, taking a slant side so it goes up, your inlet on the front, take a hive body. For cutouts, I recommend just using plain open frames. Uh, basically what that does is it allows the bees that you, you suck up to have somewhere to cluster and hang from the frame. You don't want them hanging from, from the cutout shim. So your, your, your high body goes down first, and of course if you use shallows, you can, depending on the size of the, the colony, you can use one, two, or however many uh, boxes you think you need to, to hold all the bees. So once you have your box down, uh, then goes your cutout shim. Make sure it's fully seated in the slot. And what this does, it, it allows you to keep the bees that you suck up through the bee vac contained to this bottom box. One other thing I should point out, if you're in a very warm climate, what I like to do sometimes is take a fully drawn frame, which I don't have here, and just pour water in it on both sides and put that in there. That gives the bees that you suck up um, water uh, to help them keep themselves cool. Uh, it's fall here, it's not hot, so we're not worried about it. It's late afternoon. Once you have your cutout shim, then you put your top on. Um, and let me just talk a little bit about the, 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 the top. This is the integrated model. Our vacuum motor would fit right on top of here. Um, if you got the external uh, attachment, there would be a plate that would go on there and you would take the hose from your external vacuum would, would plug into there. This right here is what we call the bypass valve. This is how you adjust the suction at the end of the hose. One of the important things on a BVAC is you want minimum suction. Uh, you want just enough that it, it sucks the bees down the hose. You don't want enough suction that's going to suck them off the comb because the velocity will kill them. Um, the other thing I'll point out now is the top piece. When you're all done, you take the top piece off and it leaves you a fully ventilated top uh, to, bring, to bring your bees back home. Uh, I do get questions um, about the proper alignment direction of the top piece because what you'll do is once you get it all together you would ratchet strap this down to keep the unit together and obviously with it ratchet strapped down you can't slide that piece out. Um, we'll talk about once we get our cutout brood you'll put another box on top so to do that you have to take this off at that point you can remove the slide. Um, also other configurations you can use you can turn it around and turn the top piece around. So now you're still drawing your air through the vac versus just up and out. And now your strap can be on and you can slide this out. It's really a matter of personal preference. If you do decide to go this way, the one question I get is, well, the hole is here and, the, and for, the, for the wing nut is there. Uh, this brass thumb screw is mainly there for transporting the hive, uh, the bee vac rather to keep this piece from sliding out when you're, when, you're, when you're moving it around. When you're actually doing the removal, there's no need to have that in there. So you can basically put this in either direction. So don't worry about not having this, uh, this thumb screw in place when you're doing the removal. It's, it's only there for, for transporting so the top, your back doesn't fall apart when you're, when you're moving it. So once we get the top on top of the cutout shim, we would then ratchet strap it down. So we have our strap in place now, so the unit is, is, is complete. It's not going to fall apart on you. Uh, if you're using the integrated mount, 
This is the rigid. Uh, this comes off the rigid back that has the uh, leaf blower attachment, so the motor itself comes right out. Uh, this fits right on top like that. Uh, if you have the shop vac model, similar principle, uh, just a different size uh, vacuum hole adapter. So we're ready. Suction in place. The bottom gate, you just want to take the brass thumb screw out, open the gate, plug your regular uh, shop vac two and a half inch hose into the hole. And what I like to do is just take the brass thumb screw and put it back in the threaded insert so you don't lose it. So when you go to close it off, uh, you, you know where it is. Now I show one eight foot section of hose here. Um, I have people that successfully use up to 40 feet of this hose. I, I generally don't go more than three sections, 20 feet. Um, at that point, it's either high enough up that I want to have scaffolding um, to work off of, not a ladder. Uh, and then you just move it up there. But I, like I said, people have been successful with very minimal mortality rate with up to 40 feet of hose, depending upon the, on, on the vacuum they use. So basically we're ready. We'll get things lined up and we'll continue on how to use it. Okay, so you can see we've exposed the colony. I've got my VVAC set up here close and we're actually fortunate enough one, one length of hose we can manage the whole colony so we're just going to use the one length of hose. Um, the process is going to be we're going to start at the bottom slowly taking the comb off. Any comb that doesn't have brood in it, uh, either empty comb or, or honey or, or nectar in, we're going to set aside into a container. Uh, later on you can crush and strain the honey out and feed the honey back. What you don't want to do is put comb with honey that's dripping uh, into your bee vac or into your hive because the, uh, it'll just coat the bees and it'll end up as a, a dead bowl of bees in the bottom. So the only thing we want to save at this point is the brood comb. Um, I use a cutout frame. Uh, basically it opens up like a book. It's got wires on it. I take the brood comb, cut them, lay them in here, close it like a book. The wires keep the comb uh, in the correct alignment. And what you want to pay attention to is it's not quite obvious that the, that the comb has an orientation but there is a slight incline on it. You want to try and keep the comb when you put it in the frame so it's in the same orientation as it is when you do the cutout. Uh, some folks prefer to use just a regular plain frame, put their, their uh, brood comb in it, rubber bands around it to hold it. Once we get the brood frames cut out I have a nuke box here. We'll just put the brood combs in the nuke box uh, so it's out of the way. You know, if there's bees on it, that's fine, just to keep it warm. And when we're all done, we'll migrate the brood comb back with the bees we sucked up right here on site. So when we leave, uh, basically the colony will be whole. We'll talk more about that later. Right now, we'll show you um, pieces of the removal and try and demonstrate proper suction of, of your hose. Remember, you're going to adjust the suction here with your with your plate and for first time users I recommend starting with the bypass fully open and slowly closing it uh, till you get suction just so you can get the bees off and if you have any doubt take the extra time your first time and you can always stop shut the vacuum off pull the top look down to the screen see how the bees are doing make sure you're not killing bees the worst thing you want to do is your first time out, use too much suction and go through all the work and end up with a bunch of dead bees. So please take the time, stop, check on them as you're going. There's no sense waiting to the very end.
finished the cutout, we put the brood into frames, and as we were going, we sucked the bees, so the bees are all in the bottom box. The cutout shim is here, keeping them down. So now what we'll do is we'll take our vacuum off the top, release the strap, and now we'll take the top of the vac off with the screen, keeping in place. And as you can see, we have the cutout shim keeping the bees below. We'll put a second box on top. We will then proceed to take the brood we cut out and you can see we have some nice full frames with rubber bands. We'll put those in the middle. We also have a few frames uh, with multiple pieces behind the wire in the book. And what you're going to want to do is once you put all your brood frames in, you want to fill out the box with either foundation or just empty frames if you're going to add uh, comb at a later time. But you want to fill out the box with frames so when you transport the frames don't slide around and, and fall through. You want them to stay in place. So once we have a full box of frames, and if you had found the queen uh, when you did the removal, which we uh, advise looking for her and if you can find her or catch her so you don't put her down the vacuum and risk damaging her. Um, if you don't find her and you do uh, suck her through the hose, there's a good chance she's, she'll survive. Many people have uh, done that, done that many times myself, and it's fine. But why take the risk if you don't have to? So that would be the time to put the queen back in with the brood. Once the queen is back in with the brood, you can put the top back on. Strap back together. So now you have all the bees from the colony in this box, your brood and the queen in the top box, and now you take the cutout shim and just slowly pull the insert out. The bees are probably clustered onto it. And you can bring it out just a little bit, give them a few minutes to go up. The queen and the brood will attract them all from the bottom box up back into the top. So we'll let them sit there for a few minutes and we'll come back and, and finish pulling it out. Okay, so we waited a while, we finished pulling the, the shim out, so now all the bees that are in there can come up through, and as you can see, this opening and the queen fanning, the bees that are flying around are all laying on the back. So what we're going to do is, we're going to put the motor back on, we're going to do some last minute sucking up of the bees we can find, and then I'll show you the proper way to remove the hose without bees escaping. Okay, so we've got most of the bees sucked up in there. I'm going to show you how to take the hose out without letting the bees out. You turn the vacuum on, leave the vacuum running. When you take the hose out, uh, the bees can't get out. The volume of air going through sucks them in and you can close the door. So I'll show you that now. As you can see, the bees are trying to get out, but the air vacuum sucks them right back in. So you take your thumb back out, close the door. Come back in. Now they're contained in there. Now to, for transportation home so they don't overheat, we will take the vacuum motor off, loosen up the strap, take the thumb screw out of the top cover, and you can slide the cover insert off, and the brood, but you can see now we have it all buttoned up screen keeps the bees in and they get good ventilation so they don't overheat in transporting home. And then once you get them home, put them on the stand where you're going to have the hive. And all you have to do is open the door and put a top cover on, leave them a day or two, and you go back and all your bees will be in the top box with the brood and the queen. You can just take that off, slide this unit out, put your normal bottom board on,
drop this down and they're in their spot. They're used to the spot because that's where you dropped them off when you got home. Uh, and that's all there is.